Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation in Spain. Day 135 of the current situation and it's all about that quarantine that the UK has slapped on people returning from Spain, a 14-day quarantine that is now in place for holidaymakers in Spain or people that were planning on visiting Spain in the near future. Firstly, big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there. A big thanks to all of the people that supported the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. Big thanks to all of the people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into some of the news that has caught my attention. As I mentioned, it's all about that quarantine. And boy, are there a lot of people upset about that decision. The comment section on Saturday went crazy with people that were basically dumbfounded when the news came through. They couldn't believe that it was happening. And they couldn't believe that it came without warning. And of course, it has put a lot of people's holiday plans in jeopardy this summer. However, the British government is not backing down and we can see here that they are offering no apologies for the Spain travel rule change. The Foreign Secretary has defended the swift decision to require travellers arriving in the UK from Spain to quarantine for 14 days. Dominic Raab says he knows it will cause disruption for holidaymakers but the government can't make apologies. Labour's Jonathan Ashworth called the handling of the move shambolic. The new travel rule was announced on Saturday evening following a spike in the number of new cases in Spain this week. It came into force less than six hours after it was confirmed by the government. Now, the British government is not the only government to change policy in recent times. We can see here that the list of countries that restricts travelling to Spain due to the regrowth in cases has increased. The UK, France, Norway and Belgium already recommend or prohibit travelling to Spanish areas such as Aragon and Catalonia. So various countries there now warning people against travelling to Spain or at least saying travel to Spain with precaution. However, the Spanish government has not thrown in the towel yet. And we can see here that the country says that they are still open and safe for tourists despite the UK warning. The country's biggest outbreaks are under control, says Arancha González Laya. Spanish authorities are insisting that the country remains a safe destination for tourists after a rise in COVID-19 cases led to the British government to warn against all non-essential travel to mainland Spain and ordered returning visitors to self-quarantine for a fortnight. The British government's sudden de facto travel ban took many in Spain and the UK by surprise. Now, the government has also come out and said that they are negotiating with the United Kingdom in order to try and keep the Balearic Islands and Canary Islands off the list. They want to keep those travel corridors open for those two particular areas in Spain. And we can see here that the government is negotiating with the UK to exclude from quarantine Balearic Islands and the Canary Islands to easily isolated island territories with an epidemiological situation of the coronavirus much better than the British. So the Spain government's still confident that Spain is a safe destination for tourists and also wanting to exclude those two particular island destinations, the Balearic Islands and the Canary Islands, from that quarantine rule. So we'll see if they are successful over the next few days because a lot of people's holiday plans, as I mentioned before, have been thrown into doubt because of the British government's decision. Now we'll have a quick look at the map of the situation in Spain and see where exactly these outbreaks are. We can see here that they are all around the country at the moment except for a few regions. The most worrying areas of course starting in the Basque country and spreading around there through Aragon and Catalonia but we can also see small outbreaks all along the Mediterranean coast going all the way down through to Cadiz and we can see that there are places in Spain now that have gone back into a phase one restriction stage, that being Totana in Murcia. There's an area that has gone into a phase two stage, that being the area there in Aragon. And also there are places with a restriction of movement. And to get an idea of exactly what the outbreaks are in Spain, we go to the city of Barcelona. We can see that there are 33 active outbreaks and the number of infected people is up to 2,500. And of course, that being in the metropolitan area of Barcelona. And as we can see, it is one of the biggest outbreaks in Spain at the moment. And as we saw in the video the other day, France has recommended people not traveling to that area. And no doubt the outbreaks in Barcelona are one of the reasons for the UK taking that decision. Now, the newspaper El País has come out over the weekend with its own investigation 
on how many people actually died during the pandemic here in Spain. We can see here that according to that newspaper, the amount of deaths in the pandemic is 44,868. The 17 autonomous communities show a balance of deaths from COVID or suspected COVID of 44,868. Similar to that reflected in the studies on excess mortality carried out by the Carlos III Health Institute, who registered 44,418, the National Statistics Institute that said that there were 44,395, and the Spanish Association of Professionals and Funeral Services, who said that there were 43,985 excess deaths during that period. Now, of course, all of these numbers here are way different from the official statistics reported by the Spanish government, who I think at the moment have the tally at around 28,000 deaths or just over that. So there is a huge difference between 28,000 and 44,000, which El Pais is now reporting. But as we have mentioned in previous videos, the government is not going to recalculate its total until September or October. So we'll have to wait until then to see whether the official statistics are changed. Now some more news about the economy. We can see here that the economic reopening barely recovered 40% of the lost activity. GDP suffered an unprecedented slump during confinement. The de-escalation period will leave historical growth figures, but will not prevent it from being the worst summer in a decade. So the severe lockdown absolutely smashed the economy in Spain. As we can see, it did bounce back when confinement was lifted, but of course not enough as we saw to prevent it from being the worst summer in a decade as far as the economy is concerned. And of course, quarantines and travel bans are only gonna worsen the situation for many, many sectors in Spain. Now, as we saw a few minutes ago on that map of the outbreaks in Spain, the city of Zaragoza is currently in a phase Phase two situation and a headline here that I found basically sums up the situation for people living in that particular city and region. Fear, exodus and anger in Zaragoza. The capital of Aragon is experiencing with growing concern its retreat to phase two as streets and terraces empty. So fear, exodus and anger. People obviously angry that they have gone back into a phase two stage. Fear because of a worsening in the health situation and exodus as people leave the city in droves trying to find a place where they can get back to some type of normality. However, that seems to be getting harder and harder to do. Now, let's have a look at some of the comments from the last video. First one here from Joe. I was actually astonished that discotheques were open at all by their very nature. They're sealed spaces due to noise reduction. Seriously, who on earth goes clubbing in the middle of a deadly pandemic? As a mate's doctor brother said, just because you're technically allowed to do something doesn't mean that you should do it. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment. A lot of people thinking like you and surprised that discotheques were opened and that nightlife and night areas in general were able to open in Spain again. Considering that a lot of other public events weren't able to do so, they had been no concerts, there's been no football games, there's been no festivals. However, people were allowed to go into sealed venues, as you said, because these places are sealed because of noise restrictions. They are poorly ventilated places in a lot of occasions, and people are now scratching their heads wondering why these places were allowed to open. And as we have seen over the last few weeks, a lot of new cases in Spain have originated from these places. But again, in Spain, it's a huge industry. The nightlife industry is a very powerful lobby and the pressure on the government to get back to some type of normality was fundamental in allowing these places to open. And we've seen the damage that it has caused. One here from Sybil. I love Spain, holidayed there twice, as I may have said before. Here in Turkey, also popular for tourists, beach areas receiving tourists, brave ones of course, with new rules but little problems. In the major cities, for us working folk, bars still close as infrastructure cannot control drinking with responsible behavior. Partying or drinking alone in homes is the only option. Thanks for the updates, cheers. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Seems that Turkey being a little bit more responsible than Spain at the moment. Of course, Turkey, another country that depends on tourism in certain areas. And interesting to see in the major cities how bars remain closed as they didn't think that they could control the infrastructure and people drinking. Again, it seems to be the opposite of what happened here in Spain. And as we have seen in recent times, Spain is now paying for the mistakes that it has made. And good to see that people that have gone to Turkey are abiding by the new rules and problems have been kept to a minimum. One here from Davey. Hi Stuart, hope you are well. I have booked a flight with Ryanair to go to Murcia in September. With TUI stopping all flights to Spain, do you think Ryanair will follow soon? Regards, Dave. 
Yeah, Dave, thanks for the comment. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what Ryanair is planning to do in the future. Of course, TUI stopping all of their flights and maybe Ryanair will follow suit. I have no idea. The Spanish government, as we saw, is still trying to convince people that Spain is a safe destination. And I'm sure that there's going to be people in the UK that are still planning to come to Spain despite that 14-day quarantine rule. And again, that could be revised over the next couple of weeks if case numbers get under control. So by September, maybe, you won't have any problems. But but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. One here from Screencast. Hi, Stuart, daily follower here. I am one of the people who have booked a hotel in November for Benidorm with a few friends. Cancellation available in case, but no flights booked as we are waiting to see what the situation is closer towards the time. As for why people like Benidorm, I don't know. I don't think anyone really knows. And another similar comment from Matthew. Benidorm is a dump, LOL. I'm loving it. First time here and got to say, it's a fantastic holiday location. Yeah, guys, thanks for the comment. We had somebody in the comment section the other day say that Benidorm is a dump. That was their opinion. I've been to Benidorm a couple of times and I said it is what it is. You either like it or you hate it. It is one of these places in Spain where you can come to from the UK and feel like you're at home, but in the sun because you've got British bars, people sell pints of beer, there's English supermarkets, there's English butcher shops. So it does have a bit of a familiar feel about it. In my opinion, it's a concrete jungle in paradise because the surrounding areas are fantastic. You've got the mountains behind Benidorm. You've got fantastic beaches in Benidorm. The water's warm. There's white sand on the beaches. And it is a popular destination for a lot of people. But uh, as I said, you either love it or you hate it. One here from Lala. Hi, Stuart. Thanks for your wonderful videos. They certainly help people try to figure out this madness we're going through. Re-tourism in the Girona area where we live, tourism is thriving. There are so many tourists from France, Germany, Belgium, Holland, and a few Nordic countries. As for people from Barcelona who have second homes here, have shown no respect whatsoever, and even in the state of alarm, they managed to come here. Shocking. I'm not fearful of the situation as my village is so small and our local town is small, but obviously it is still a threat to others. Keep up the good work and many thanks, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa, thanks for a comment. That's a very popular part of the world, the Girona coast there. Lots of people from other European countries coming down there. And obviously, as you said, they are still visiting Spain, so they don't feel that there is a problem there at the moment. As we've seen over the last few months, big cities are a problem and the exodus from big cities there's a problem, of course, with people leaving Madrid, problem with people leaving Barcelona, people not respecting that voluntary lockdown that they have in place at the moment. But again, I see what the situation is in Spain. The majority of places are trying to adapt. You've got good sanitary conditions in most places now. People are wearing masks. People are washing their hands every time they go into a place. So people are trying to do their best. But of course, this is a virus that spreads very, very quickly and can catch people unawares. One here from Mark. Ola Stewart, face masks on the flights and in public areas I could have put up with. 14 days at home on return is the final nail in the Spain coffin for this year at least. Shame for us and the Spanish tourist trade. Hi Mark, thanks for the comment and you're right, it is the final nail in the coffin for many people. People were just getting used to having to wear a mask. People were just getting used to that new normal in Spain. They were obviously willing to put up with that for a few days in the sun, but now this quarantine rule has thrown plans out the window for many, many people. And I'm sorry that so many people have had their plans plans shattered this year. But the health situation is what it is and hopefully it'll be under control for next year. One here from Cheaper Charlie Stewart. I do enjoy some intellectual debate in the comments, but have you thought about moderating your comments? I worry that some people may be physically harmed by believing some of these comments. Cheers. Yeah, hi Cheaper. It's very, very hard to moderate all of the comments and I do agree there are a lot of people in the comment section spreading some ridiculous ideas. But to be honest, I don't believe in censorship. I believe that people should be able to say what they want. As long as they don't abuse or insult other people, I think you should be able to say whatever you want about a certain topic. People can believe whatever they want to believe. However, in the comment section, I do notice a lot of people that are pushing the same argument again and again and again and again. They're very, very well trained and they repeat the same things day after day after day and they don't like people that don't agree with them. They have their gurus, the people that are feeding them this information, and they think that by flooding the comment section on social media that people are gonna believe what they say if they say it often enough. A couple of months ago, I had an ant invasion in my home. I got rid of the first lot, but they kept on coming and coming and coming and coming. 
And it's pretty similar. I read a pretty good article recently about this topic and I'll pin that in the comment section below. So check it out and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. One here from John here in Canberra, there are no cases of coronavirus. I love Spain and really want to retire there in the future. And another one here from Colin. Hi Stuart, love your videos. I'm planning to relocate this year to Spain after retirement. I have book flights in late September to start the residencia process. This will be my fourth attempt to get to Spain this year. Flights cancelled due to a storm and COVID-19. I hope I'm luckier this time, but it ain't looking good. Take care and stay safe. Yeah, guys, thanks for the comment. Lots of people still considering retiring to Spain and Portugal. This year's hiccup, and as we saw there, there was a storm that also changed that person's plans. But uh, hopefully things will start to get back to normal and you'll be able to come to Spain and start the processes to get your Spanish residence. It is still, in my opinion, a great country to live in. It's been pretty hard hit over the last few months, but I'm sure that things will recover. And I do encourage people to consider coming to a country like Spain or Portugal, as I have mentioned, to retire and get a good quality of life where you can relax, good weather, good lifestyle, friendly people, good food. I do recommend places like this for retirement. So hopefully everything works out in the future. And finally, one here from Winston. Why do you pronounce Pedro Sanchez as Pedro Sanchez? Aren't you overdoing the f sounds? Yeah, hi Winston, thanks for the comment. I say Pedro Sanchez because his name is Pedro Sanchez. In Spain, or at least the majority of the country, they pronounce the Z as a F sound. In English, we have exactly the same sound when you say think, thought, through, for example, it's exactly the same. Some people say it's a lisp, it is not the case. Spanish is a phonetic language and the Z is pronounced as a F and the C is also pronounced F in certain situations. For example, but as I said, in English, we have exactly the same sound. Think, thought, thank you. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. See you in the next one. Hasta luego.